If you like pretzels or if you are interested in more sourdough recipes, these sourdough pretzels are really for you. I've been playing with a recipe and I gotta say, as a German, growing up in Germany and eating a lot of pretzels, these sourdough pretzels are almost, if not really better than the regular yeast-based ones. Now I'm going to do it the real authentic way by dipping them in lye and I'm going to show you how you can do that safely. However, I will also leave the complete recipe down below in the description box with some tips how you can substitute the lye if you don't feel comfortable using it or if you don't want to buy it and or don't have it. There are a few tools that I recommend you have if you want to make sourdough pretzels and one is a scale. I tried measuring the ingredients in cups and so forth, but especially with the flour, if you go by weight, it's so much more accurate and you will get the same result every single time versus the volume, which, you know, if your flour is packed, it's going to be a lot heavier than if it's sifted and really fluffy. Um, I'm also going to leave links for some products that I'm mentioning. This one is really inexpensive, so it's not a big investment and it will really uh, upgrade your entire baking. Then I am recommending a stand mixer just because, yes, you can mix the dough by hand. However, if you really want to mix it for five or ten minutes, it can get kind of tedious. And that's why I love letting my kitchen aid do the work and then I can just go ahead and use the dough when it's ready. I made the dough last night and this is in the afternoon of the next day and the timeline really depends a lot on the temperature in your house. So this is in, what is it, early April and it's still fairly cool and our house is usually really cool and no more than 68 degrees. So I got a long fermentation, more than 12 hours However, you can make this recipe. You start it in the morning and if it's really warm in your house, you can probably bake it in the afternoon. Also, it kind of depends on how much fermentation you want. If you want it properly fermented, then I recommend at least eight hours. And don't be afraid to do a long fermentation because these pretzels won't be sour at all. If you don't like the sourdough taste, you can barely if anything, taste the sourdough taste. For the dough, I am mixing the flour, milk, butter that I let sit out at room temperature so it's really soft, salt, and my sourdough starter. And then I put that in my kitchen egg mixer and mix it on a very slow speed for at least five minutes until the dough comes together and comes off the sides of the bowl and looks really uniform. And all I'm going to do is just cover it with a beeswax wrap and a cotton bowl cover so that the dough doesn't dry out and let that sit overnight. Let's check up on the dough that I made last night. I let that sit really out on the counter and I didn't do anything with it until the afternoon. And here's my beeswax wrap and my bowl cover so that the dough doesn't dry out. I'm going to put that aside. And this is what the dough looks like, really spongy, just exactly the way I want it. transfer that to my work area here. There's a little bit of dough in there. I get that out. Get every little bit of goodness out of here. And now I'm just going to knead it a little bit. We don't need a whole lot because we will do some more kneading. So here's where the kitchen scale comes in. I like my pretzels to be a uniform size because 
then they will bake very evenly. If you eyeball like I do uh, when you're cutting the dough, you will get very uh, odd sizes of pretzels and one will bake faster than the others. If you don't mind, you can do it without a scale, but uh, this is probably my German accuracy. You're coming out a little bit where I like uh, the pretzels to be approximately the same. And I am going for 85 or so grams, maybe a little bit more like 88 grams, and that gives me 14 pretzels. Just cut some dough here. And let's see how I'm doing. That is too much. Still too much. This is how much I can be off. 95, and a little less. Okay, 90, I can live with that. And then I'll quickly shape it a little bit into a long, thick stick, just like so, and set it on the counter. I'll continue with all of this. I will show you how to make pretzels and then I'm also going to show you how you can make some other shapes with your pretzel dough. 88 is good. Do this just to get a smooth outside where I'm kind of pressing the seam together. It'll be a little easier later once you shape your pretzels or whatever shapes you're going for. Now comes the pretzel shaping part and I have a cookie sheet lined with parchment paper. I know that parchment paper is not 100% ideal because the pretzels dipped in lye will stick to the parchment paper a little bit after baking but not bad. You could brush it a little bit with oil. I don't mind it so much but it's really the lye and I don't want because these are aluminum I don't want the lye to get into the aluminum because that's going to make it look a little funny so that's the reason I'm using that. You could also use something else like a silicone baking mat. Okay and here is the pretzel shaping part. You take your little oval here and with two hands and some pressure you roll it out into a long string. If you've ever been to Germany, the various regions, you might know that different regions have different pretzel shapes. Where I'm from, the area around where I was born, let me put it this way, the area around Stuttgart, which is Swabia, the people love having this thicker part in the middle, I like to call it the belly, and then the arms, the actual pretzel part, to be pretty thin and crisp. Bavarians like their pretzels a little bit more uniform, so that's a little bit up to you. And what I have found is that every time I shape these pretzels, I need to go a little longer than I initially think, because the dough will contract a little bit, and that's why you want to roll it with some pressure out to the ends and then sometimes just hold it there a little bit so that the dough doesn't spring back. And then you put the ends into a long U and you cross the ends once and then you do that a second time so it looks like this and then you just take those two ends and press them up here. That's your pretzel and I'll put that over here on my cookie tray. I'll show you again with the second one. Hopefully that goes a little bit faster. I'm not talking through this so much. And you'd be surprised the professional bakers in Germany, they're so quick with this and they have this one little move to create the crossover pretzel part, the little arms that I have never been able to perfect. So I'm not even going to try at this point, I'll just spend a little bit more time. And as you see, I'm leaving that thicker part in the middle. And don't worry if you don't get your pretzel shapes right from the get go. It took me a few tries and my first ones looked more like knots than like pretzels. So that's perfectly okay. And sometimes you just got to try out what they will look like 
once you shape them and bake them because they uh, might actually expand somewhere where you didn't expect and especially if you make the arms pretty thick. So I'm going to finish these other ones. However, what I wanted to do is I want to show you some other shapes. A lot of Germans also lug pretzel sticks and all you do is just leave it like this and that's super simple and you really don't need to do anything with that. So I will do two like that. I'm going to just roll them a little bit nicer and a little bit smoother on the outside and if you have a bit of a seam then that's always good to have that pointing down. Let's make that a little bit longer. You can do a lot of fun things with these pretzels. Now here is another thing that I like doing and that is cutting them into about a third and rolling them into tiny little balls and making sure that I press the seam together so they don't expand in the wrong area. And here's my little pretzel ball and I'll show you later what we will do with those actually with all the all the pretzel shapes okay. and this one And then you can do a pretzel knot and we'll do that. I'm going to cut this into half so they don't end up being too big. Some people even like to make pretzel rolls. So basically you turn that into a bigger ball than, than what I did there. And then it's just like a dinner roll size. And yes, you could make your pretzels with just one string that's the same thickness all around. What I want to do is create a knot here. And then tuck the ends under. And that's your little pretzel knot. So we'll put that on the cookie tray and I'll do one more. Here's a pretzel knot. I have my pretzel shapes on my cookie sheet and now what I need to do is put them in the freezer and the reason is they are pretty soft still and whether you actually use a lye bath or use something else if you want to dump them into something they're going to be really soft and they're going to kind of fall apart and that was one mistake that i made earlier in my pretzel baking uh, journey and i have since then learned that freezing them for 15 minutes makes them stiffen up a little bit and then they're much easier to put in whatever bath you're going to dip them into so i'm going to do that right now and then i will come back and show you how we do the lye bath my pretzels are still in the freezer and at some point in about a few minutes, my kitchen timer might go off. So if we're still recording, then you know why that noise. And this is a good time to prepare your lye bath. I am weighing out, um, I'm actually gonna put it two ounces here. Oops, press a little bit too hard there. So here's the lye and I'm just gonna measure out the lye, that's the powder. And yes, some people say, is not that Drano? It is essentially Drano. Okay, there's one ounce, that's about 30 grams. And I'm gonna set that aside. The really important part is that you add the lye to the water, not the other way around. Really important. First, add the water to 
your pot and then add the lye. So we'll put that on here. That's a little more than we need, but that's okay. Also, here's my slotted spoon and I will put on gloves. Ideally, you want to put on goggles or some safety glasses. Don't copy me, I will not do that, but I will use gloves because um, lye is very caustic. So we'll add that right in here. I also like to keep a little distance here and you might want to make sure that you keep kids and pets out of the kitchen while this is going on. Just be sensible and take good measures. We'll heat this up over the stove here. And now comes the pretzel dipping part. These are not quite as stiff as I had hoped, but because I wanted to keep the video going, now that's what's going on. So I'll put them on here and just dip them. As you can see, I'm staying a little bit further away and take them out. So at this point, once you've dipped your pretzels, they are okay to touch. They're not caustic anymore. And that was my kitchen timer. So I took them out a minute too early. Uh, German bakeries, the ones that bake, I don't know, hundreds of pretzels in a day, they have baskets that they just flip into the lye bath and then flip back and the pretzels are in them. So that's super convenient. I obviously don't have that and I think this is just as good. Let's do the little balls at the same time here. Save a little bit of time. And yes, this lye is the same lye that you use for soap making. Pretzel knots. At this point, I can take my gloves off lid back in here and now I'm going to cut the pretzels with a very sharp knife you can also use a bread lame I already turned my oven to 450 degrees they're very slippery it's almost a little bit like soap so for the sticks, I like to do three cuts at an angle. And then the balls, I just like to cut a cross into them. You can do the same thing if you're making pretzel buns. And you can already see how they want to come apart. The dough wants to rise. Sometimes they get a little stuck here. So. And Germans really cut the pretzels further down here rather than in the middle, but you can do whatever you want. I'm gonna sprinkle them with pretzel salt. This is the coarse pretzel salt that's perfect, but any type of salt will work. 
You can use molten salt. If you're hearing a lot of noise right now, that is cats. We don't have a door by our kitchen, so that's why they can come in and we can't keep them out. Just wait for the oven to get to 450 degrees and then I will bake them for 15 to 20 minutes when until they're nice and reddish brown and you'll see what that looks like. and they smell so good and they sound really crunchy when you touch them and I can feel that they are just perfect so I'm just going to have them with a little bit of butter which is the best way to have them however you can also serve them with a cheese fondue and I do have the original recipe with yeast no sourdough and the link is right here Thank you so much for joining me in my kitchen and I will see you in the next video.